Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a great day, particularly for my 9M4s, period two. This is a second lesson in algebra. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Welcome to anyone else who is watching. I'm going to try to hit all four of these things. Please make sure for my class you're writing these down. Um, and we're going to look at uh, adding and subtracting to start with. And then after that, we'll look at multiplying and dividing. So please write the following down. Add or subtract like terms only. Now, we did that last lesson in terms of what was a, a like term. So this one, we're going to do a couple of questions on how to add and subtract like terms. So 3a plus 4x minus 2a plus 6x plus 5. Okay, write the example down. First of all, I'm going to show you the way that we start by doing these things, and that is by circling the like terms. Notice I have three A's and I've got minus two A's. Remember, we always circle the sign that goes in front of it. That is plus three A, but we don't have a plus there. Um, likewise, I'm going to do it a different color. I'm going to um, do an underlining of the four X and the plus six X because they're also like terms. And then finally, I might put a little box around the plus five, but there are no other other numbers. Remember, that number is the constant term. There are one, two, three, four, five terms in this particular expression. So I'm going to simplify this by doing 3a take away 2a, which is 1a. I can just write the a. If you want to have a 1 there, you certainly can, but it's not needed. I'm going to put here for the next one, 4x plus 6x is plus 10x. And then I've got plus 5 at the end, and that is my final answer. So again, we've added and subtracted like terms only. Pretty straightforward, right? We're going to look at a slightly more challenging example. Example 2, again, I want you to write this out. I'm going to have 5x squared plus 3x minus 2x squared um, plus 1. Okay, so for this question, I'm going to circle the 5x squared. I'm going to circle the minus 2x squared. Now, they are the only like terms in this question. Yes, I know what you're saying. What about the x? But this is x. It's not x squared. Remember, squaring something means you're multiplying it by itself. Let's say, for example, x was 3. Well, in this case, it would be 9. In this case, x would be 3. In this case, x would be 9. So they're actually different terms. So I'm going to add the 5, take away 2. That is 3x squared. I've got no other x's, so plus 3x. I've got no other constant numbers, just got plus 1. And there you go. That's your answer. Okay, one last one for adding and subtracting. Often people get this one wrong. 5xy plus 3x minus, uh, let's say, yx plus 5x. Now, I'm going to circle like terms. So I've obviously got the plus 3x, and I've got the plus 5x. I've got xy, but I've also got yx. Now, is that a like term? That's really interesting. I'm going to ask you this question. What is 3 times 2? Well, hopefully you said 6. What is 2 times 3? Well, hopefully you again, you said 6. When you are timesing two things together, it doesn't actually matter which way they are. Therefore, if I've got x times y and y times x, they're actually the same thing. They're both just the same as x, y, or y, x. So in that case, I'm going to have 5xy minus 1. I've got a 1 there, 1yx. One which means if I do this, I got 5, subtract 1, which is 4xy's. You can put yx if you want, but x comes before y in the alphabet, so I'm going to do it that way. Um, and plus 3x plus 5x is plus 8x. Beautiful. That's my final answer. Once again, I can't add them together because I've got an xy and an x, which means that they are not like terms. Okay, these are not like terms. So... When you're adding and subtracting, you can only add or subtract like terms. All right, let's hit multiplying. So I want you to write this down yet again. Okay, example one for multiplying. And multiplying is often easier than what we are doing with adding and subtracting. Um, I'm going to put times three to start with. Now, with multiplying, and it works the same as dividing, you simply have to 
um, well, let's say we deal with the numbers first and then we can deal with the letters because we've already mentioned that 5 times a can be the same as a times 5 and all we're doing here is timesing it by 3 so theoretically it doesn't matter which order I do these things in so theoretically I could say 3 times 5 times a because there's a times in between it doesn't matter which way they are and that's why I say deal with the numbers first because you can actually just do the 5 times the 3 which is 15 and all I'm left with is times the A. But again, I would write that pretty much straight away as just 15A. Okay, they don't need to be like terms because they're all separated by a times sign. So example two, you might have a 3Q times 4 times 5W. Well, once again, I'm going to deal with the numbers only. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 times 5 is 60. Again, that's because you've got 3 times Q times 4 times 5 times W. It doesn't matter where you times those first. So I'm just doing the numbers first. But now I'm left with Q times W. Now they're not like terms, are they? Um, and so what we're actually going to do is just take away the multiplication signs and instead of having 30 times Q times W, we're just going to write it as 60QW. And that's my final answer. Because, you know, they're not the same terms, so I'll just take the times away because that's a much simpler way of writing it. It still means 60 times Q times W. Once again, the Q, I'm going to put it first because it comes first in the alphabet. What about this one, e.g. 3? 5A times 3A. What would you do there? Well, again, they're separated by the multiplication, 5 times A times 3 times A. You don't need to write the stuff in white, just the stuff in purple. Um, 5 times 3 is 15, and then I've got A times A. Okay, now, in year 7 and 8, oh, not really even year 8, year 7 you could write that way. What happens when you multiply something by itself? Well, hopefully you remembered, you can write it with a power sign. So you could write it as a squared. So if, this, if the um, term or the algebraic symbol is the same, we simply can just write it as a square. What, would, what do you reckon would happen if I had um, 3a squared times 4a? What might happen there, do you think? Well, 3 times 4 is 12. And this time I've got a squared times a. Well, that means I've got a times a. And I've got another times a. So how many a's have I got? I've got three of them, and we can put a cube. Now, we're not going to be doing indice laws just yet. That's what those little powers are. You may have done them in year eight. We'll get to those later on in the more challenging questions. But that's basically your multiplications. All right, the last part we're going to be doing, of course, is divide. I'm going to hopefully hit this within the next two minutes. So dividing is very similar, okay, with multiplication. Deal with the numbers first, and then you can deal with the letters. So, EG1. If I had, let's say, 15A divided by 5, well, just like the numbers, I'm going to deal with the numbers first. 15 divided by 5 equals 3, and then I've just got A, and I've got, that's all I've got, so it's just 3A. Now remember, this could be written as this, 15A over 5, but again, 15 divided by 5 is 3, and I've just got the A on its own, we've got A. Um, we get more challenging questions, I guess, like this, it might be um, 10A divided by 2A. Well, if I deal, deal with the numbers first, 10 divided by 2, so I deal with those two things, we get 5, but this time I get A divided by A. Now, if I said to you, what is A divided by A, people get a little bit um, yeah, unsure. So the questions I have to ask, again, don't have to write this part down, but what is 5 divided by 5? The answer is 1. What is 10 divided by 10? The answer is 1. What's a million divided by a million? Well, hopefully you said 1. What is A divided by A? 1. 
Whenever you divide something by itself, the answer is always 1. So a divided by a is 1, and you get a little times in between, I guess. So 5 times 1 is just 5. And often what we say, we, they cancel each other out. Now, you might have it written this way, 10a over 2a. And again, I do 10 divided by 2 is 5. And because I've got a over a, they cancel each other out. We've just got the answer of 5. Um, if you had a slightly bigger one, for example, and you can still write this one down, um, you might have, let's say, 25a3 divided by 5a. In that case, again, deal with the numbers first. 25 divided by 5 is just 5. I've got a3 divided by a. Well, think a3 means a times a times a, and you're dividing it by a which means just one of them will cross out, which is leaving two of them up, um, up, like uh, yeah, two, two of them are left over. Now theoretically, what you can do is this is a to the power of one. You can actually subtract three, take away one is two. That is part of your indice laws, which is a little bit down the track. Okay, but that's certainly how you would do those harder questions. You won't get too many of those in, that, in today's activities. They're just fairly basic. Deal with the numbers first, then deal with the letters. Don't forget though, guys, when you're coming back to those questions with you're adding and subtracting, this is where people do find it difficult going back to adding and subtracting after you've been doing the multiplying and dividing. You have to add or subtract like terms only, but if you're timesing, then it's okay. Timesing is much easier. We just deal with the numbers first and then the letters, the same as the division. Okay, guys, I hope that made sense. Please make sure you wrote some stuff down for my class 9M4. You need to have stuff in your book on this. On this. Um, write the examples down, then go through activities. Hopefully it should be okay. Um, but any problems, either ask the teacher or email me. I hope you have an awesome day. See you guys.